After 9-11, there was all this anxiety about glass towers for obvious reasons. Uh, but at the same time, there was this extraordinary desire to build them higher than before. I mean, this kind of imperial drive to have these towers, these spires, again. And there, there was a, a desire to reclaim the, the old utopian force of glass structures. In many ways, the shard looks like a project from the 9-11 from the competition that just grew frustrated with delays on the Hudson and, and moved to the Thames. I'm quite um, ambivalent about this question of the building as image. On the one hand, I think we need architecture to orient urban life. And there is a, an important uh, aspect of architecture that, that is monumental or can be monumental. I mean, too often in, in cities, people are, are lost. They don't have the traditional symbols to, to guide them. So actually, you know, the, the shard can be seen as a one point, maybe with the Garrican on the other side and other towers in the city, uh, to, to orient this part of London. And it might even recapture an old sense of the, the river as a, as a gateway uh, into the city and into London proper. As we, we walk around, it, 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 it's disruption to the scale uh, of the, the neighborhood. Is, is severe, maybe even catastrophic. I mean, just the juxtaposition of the Shard and the Borough Market. I mean, what, what drew people to that area, uh, that might be disrupted uh, by the, the sheer scale of the thing. You know, from the, the, the moment of, uh, say, the, the World Trade Towers in New York, there was always a concern that you know, the demands of uh, you know, of advanced capital would create this disruption in the city. And the, the need for these kinds of structures um, to house these extraordinary corporations, uh, that, that that loss of scale would be fatal to the, to the city. In many ways it, it was, but we've, we've also learned how to, to, to moderate that scale, to, to fill in the scale from the pedestrian on the street to these extraordinary mega structures. But what I don't see here yet is that mediation, is that connection um, between the, the scale of a, of a pedestrian on the bridge or, or along the Thames and then, and then the, the shard. Certainly, the, if it is a symbol of anything, it's a symbol of finance capital. Uh, and there, I think you really have to think about the the extraordinary transformation in the rhetoric or the language of glass architecture over the last century or two. I mean, glass used to have this utopian value, and this kind of new transparency to the world uh, where we'd all just see in light you know, how, the, how society worked. Obviously, that kind of transparency is not what this kind of transparency is about. I mean, it really, if it, if it is an icon, it's an icon for uh, the new kind of uh, financial world. Um, but that, you know, again, I think it's, it's too easy just to condemn it. I mean, that is our situation. Uh, we can say it's nothing but spec spect spectacle architecture. It's nothing but uh, a sign of the financial rule of the world. Um, but in a way, that is our condition. And the question is, what does it what does it, the building, do with it? I mean, even the term, I don't know who coined it, but even the term suggests that it is this uh, you know, act of violence to uh, thrust this piece of glass and steel uh, you know, right into the, the heart of the city. I mean, maybe it's a way to, to pump it back up, you know, to, it's like extreme, an extreme operation, you know, radical surgery. They stick a needle into your heart to get it to go again. Um, and that's, that seems to be the metaphor that, that captures it right now for me.